Stuck in Love, which shares with uh, admission uh, Nat Wolf. So a very middle-of-the-road intergenerational drama in which writers live in beach huts and have sort of bohemian lives with bohemian-type problems. So Jake is this celebrated author, separated from his wife, played by Jennifer Connelly, who is convinced, he's convinced that she's going to come back. The kids don't agree. His son is loyal and devoted and needs to get out more. Daughter is edgy and disrespectful and needs to stay in more. The former is looking for love. The latter is running away from it. Here's a clip. Uh, what are some of your favorite books? Is that really the angle you're going to play? Really? I thought you'd be more creative than this. I mean, well, come on, we're writers, right? Yeah. Books matter to us. I mean, come on, come on here, please. Fine. What are some of your favorite books? No, you can't do that. I asked you. You asked me because you want to know something personal about me. If I tell you what my favorite books are, you'll come up with titles you think will convince me that we're soulmates, or you'll latch onto one of my favorites and try to convince me that it's one of your favorites, too. God, you're so tough. That's why you're obsessed with me. I'm not obsessed with you. I'm like a unicorn to you. You'll do or say anything to possess me. I'm really not like that, and you're not anything like a unicorn. Okay, well then, books. But please at least attempt to be interesting. No catcher in the rye or port noise complaint, okay? So you get a sense of the kind of the tone of the dialogue from that. I mean, it's 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 the problem with it is it's one of those movies in which you you kind of know at the beginning that all these problems are going to come to head. I mean, this is standard narrative, but all these problems are going to come to head in a particular way, and you can kind of see how it's going to work itself out, which is fine. That's not a problem. Not everything has to surprise constantly. And it's pleasant if largely unbelievable stuff, in as much as it is a depiction of a writer's life that I think very few writers would actually recognise. I mean, there is an awful lot of sitting in absolutely fabulous surroundings doing not very much writing and being able to spend a lot of time worrying about, you know, the greater existential problems. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, people reading books and, and angst and all that sort of, but n not a huge amount of work. At times, it kind of aspires to the tone of uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower, that idea about the kind of the young misfits wrestling with literature and sex and raging chemicals and that sort of stuff. Although, obviously, from my point of view, I think that the, the kinnear Connolly relationship is the thing that's most interesting. There's an awful lot of it that takes place around meal tables. And... That's fine because that's a you know it's a sort of standard device having people sitting down having conversations around meal tables. But it made me, it made me think that actually the film itself is a little bit like that. I mean it is like a, there's a it's a it's a smorgasbord. It's a table which is laid out. There's a there's a bit of everything on there. You know there's some bread and there's some carbs and there's some protein and it's it's somewhat over egged and it's a little bit salty but not as much as it needs to be. But it's sorely lacking spice. I mean it is like. All the constituent elements are kind of there, but they don't really add up to much more than just a passingly pleasant mealtime conversation, which is fine because there are plenty of other movies which don't do that.